Back to the Future was directed by Robert Zemeckis and produced by Steven Spielberg and starred Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. And somehow, I've never reviewed this movie. I don't know. I don't know how. It's it's Back to the Future. But I'm about to change that. The first time I saw Back to the Future, I must have been about six years old because there was a promotional tie-in with McDonald's at the time. If you bought a Big Mac or something, you could get a VHS for, for really cheap. I think it was like Land Before Time, Field of Dreams, Fifle Goes West, and Back to the Future. And I remember we brought home the Land Before Time and Back to the Future, and I watched this because it was rated PG despite a lot of language. It was definitely heavier on the language side and my family was a little iffy about it for a minute, but the PG rating saved my life back in the day. There were so many movies from the 70s and 80s that just would never be PG today that I got to watch when I was a kid, Jaws being a big one. And this was also a film that today would probably be PG-13 just for language and like sexual references. Just there's a lot of awkward stuff in this movie we'll get into. As a six-year-old, this was really important to my development for loving movies and for appreciating film as an art form. It was such an entertaining movie. And even when I didn't understand the nuances of, of everything they talked about, some of the dialogue can get a little adult at times, I was always entertained by it. Watching it all these years later, I still remember what I thought certain sentences meant that, uh, you know, I didn't understand what they were really referring to. And I, I still remember what I used to think, some innocent, naive thing. And now, all these years later, I, I still am able to remember that. But it's interesting how even when you don't fully understand something you're watching, if it's great, you're going to be entertained by it as a child, and I was. And be honest, if you saw this movie as a kid, you probably wanted to get on a skateboard and try to get on the back of someone's car. It seemed like the best method of transportation ever next to a bicycle when I was a kid. I could never get away with it, though. The movie does an excellent job of setting up his family life in the beginning because just about everything you learn about them in these few scenes is going to come back into play when he goes into the past. Uncle Joey didn't make parole, he's still in jail. His parents are completely estranged, and his sibling relationship isn't that great either. And of course, there's Biff. What are you looking at, butthead? Crispin Glover as George McFly is really good in this movie, as older George and younger George. He has distanced himself considerably from these films. It seems like he just doesn't want to talk about them, and that's, of course, his business. But he's really good in this movie. <laughs> what, Lorraine? What? But the heart of this movie is absolutely in the relationship between Marty, played excellently by Michael J. Fox, and Christopher Lloyd's Doc Brown. These two work so well together. It's such a strange relationship, too. The film never really makes much of an attempt to explain why they know each other. I mean, Marty is 17 and Doc Brown is obviously like older. And so it's just a weird sort of like, who is this guy? Later, he jokingly refers to him as his uncle as a way to get young Lorraine off his back. But they never really go into the relationship. And it's honestly kind of fine as a mystery. I like that he's just this weird, eccentric old guy that Marty just so happens to know. And this is the type of casting that can absolutely change the way a character is on the page. There are so many things that Lloyd brings to Doc Brown that you just can't write. Like this scene, for instance. So, uh, this is my uh, Doc. My uncle. Doc. Brown. Hi. Hi. Marty, this may seem a little forward. Like, I haven't read this script, so I don't know if that sequence was written, but if it did, it, it might say something like, Doc Brown looks at Marty nervously. That uh, does nothing for you, but you get Christopher Lloyd as his character, and he just changes everything. His comic timing is on point in this film, and a lot of this is due to excellent direction from Robert Zemeckis. This is a beautifully shot movie. Dean Cundy lends the film, and the movie looks incredible. It's also edited pristinely. There isn't a single sequence that feels as if it hasn't been immaculately timed. Uh, the movie doesn't get enough credit for that. It's a really fun movie, and it's an exciting movie, and it has the music and Huey Lewis and the news and all that stuff that you know and love, but this is a really damn well-made film, technically. It's essentially a perfectly edited movie. And Michael J. Fox as Marty is just the most likable every man you could have. You immediately relate to this kid. He wants to be in a band. He can't get into the contest. They don't like him. He's just too darn loud. By the way, that's Huey Lewis in a cameo. 
And you just feel for him. His life is kind of falling apart. His his parents don't like each other anymore. He can't really get along with his brother and sister. The family car got totaled and Biff is a fucking asshole. So you immediately feel for him. So after a thrilling chase sequence at a mall parking lot, he gets thrown back into the past and has to fix his family. And if you've never seen Back to the Future, I'm going to get into some spoilers here. So that's your warning. I know that it's strange to think that someone hasn't seen this movie, but... People are born every day, and those people maybe haven't seen Back to the Future yet. <laughs> when Marty saves his young father from being hit by a car, and Marty gets hit, he accidentally takes the place of his father. And suddenly, his mother has an affection for him. And what proceeds are some of the most awkward and embarrassing scenes in cinema history. Seeing Marty's mom fawn all over him and try to get him to sleep in her room, and she thinks his name is Calvin Klein. This is all really funny stuff, but it's super embarrassing. But this is where the movie just really picks up. All the things they throw at Marty, the obstacles in his way, having to get his parents together at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, having to get his father to stand up to Biff, having to get out of this awkward crush that his mom has on him. This is brilliant writing. It's the type of writing that I get jealous when I think about it. It's such such great ideas constantly throughout the whole film. Something else I have to talk about is Alan Silvestri's score, an Oscar-winning score, by the way. Clearly, I mean, it's one of the most iconic film themes of all time. I'm sorry, what's that? It didn't win the Oscar? It wasn't even nominated? Oh, it's hard to imagine that such a brilliant score wouldn't even be nominated, especially since the film was nominated for other Oscars and actually won one. I love Silvestri's music. I have ever since Back to the Future and Predator, Forrest Gump, Castaway, The Avengers. Like, this guy is a fucking genius. And even though he gets tons of work and obviously isn't really underrated, from an awards standpoint, I think he is. But getting back to the film, this movie single-handedly made me want to learn how to play the guitar when I was a kid. And I actually did try for a while, and I wasn't good at it at all. I just didn't have a passion for it. I tried for like a month, and it, I learned a few chords and things, and it just, it was never really, it wasn't gonna go anywhere. There were certain things I picked up as a kid that I thought like, yep, this is gonna be something I'm gonna, oh, nope, not that. Mm -mm. Movies, yeah, movies, that's, where my brain's at, that's for sure. This is just such a thrilling film from start to finish. There's not a single boring moment. There's no scene that drags. Every scene has something funny about it, clever, innovative. The writing is so tight and it's constantly exciting from beginning to end. It's easily one of my favorite movies. Back to the Future still holds up. It's never not going to. I, I recently rewatched Jaws. It was playing at a drive-in, Jaws and Jurassic Park back to back. And Jaws still holds up as well. And at this point, movies like Back to the Future and Jaws, they're just, I think they're cemented. If it was ever going to age, it would have happened already. I love this film, and of course, I'm gonna give it an A+. I do wanna talk about the plot hole, the thing that people often talk about, which is why don't Marty's parents recognize that their child looks exactly like the person who helped get them together in the 50s. There's been a lot of debate about this. Uh, filmmakers and actors and the writer of, one of the writers of the film, Bob Gale, have, have said, you know, their, their takes on it. The simple fact of the matter is, I just don't care. The film is so good that it's able to, to curve that plot hole for me. You could say that they wouldn't remember this guy that they only spent about a week with back in the day. You could say that it's hard to remember faces of people you went to school with for many years, and all of that is true. But the simple fact remains, they named their kid Marty, which means they named their baby after the kid that brought them together. And not even their first son. <laughs> their second son. Also, there's this moment. Ah, uh, Biff, what a character. Always trying to get away with something. Top Biff ever since high school. Although, if it wasn't for him, we never would have fallen in love. That's right. So they definitely remember that night. He remembers knocking out Biff. Now, yeah, Biff is still in their life, and he's a constant presence, and so it's hard to forget somebody that's always there. So, yeah, it's kind of a thing for me, but I just don't care. 
every once in a while, something is just so good that I just, I don't give a shit if there's something wrong with it. Fuck it, man. Who cares? It's Back to the Future. It's amazing. It's a phenomenal movie. You know, there's this, you can, you can call movies perfect. I don't like to do that. There's only a handful of movies I would even remotely call perfect. But that doesn't mean that the movie doesn't feel perfect. It just feels feels fucking perfect. I love Back to the Future so much. So this is my first in a series that I'm gonna be doing all throughout the summer. I don't have a rigid schedule for this, but I would like to, from time to time, review some older films that I've never reviewed. Or perhaps that I have talked about in the past, but I would love to do an updated video for them. For instance, I would really like to at some point review all four Indiana Jones movies in separate videos. I've talked about them many years ago, like in compilation videos where I kind of breeze through them really quickly. I did some stuff with some other YouTube channels. That was a long fucking time ago. And I would really like to make updated reviews for all of those movies. And there's some more I'd like to talk about. So throughout this summer, I'm just going to every once in a while review a movie I love. I just feel like it. I think it'd be fun. I hope you guys enjoy that. Thank you guys so much as always for watching. And I also want to give a big thank you to the sponsor for this video. ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN helps keep your private information private. Now that you're spending even more of your life online, you're giving advertisers and your internet service provider even more opportunities to gather information about you. ExpressVPN provides a layer of protection to prevent others from being able to see what you're searching for and what sites you visit. ExpressVPN also offers content unblocking, which is very convenient if you live in a country where something is streaming in another country that you'd prefer to watch, but it's not available in your country. For instance, I live in the US and there's a lot of anime that I would love to watch on Netflix it's just not available in the US. But movies like Your Name or Dragon Ball Super Broly, the show's Fate Stay Night or Naruto Shippuden are available in other countries. And I can access that because of ExpressVPN's content unblocking. So that's very convenient for me. So check out the link in the description below and find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free. That link is expressvpn.com slash Chris Stuckman. And that link is in the description below. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. And once again, thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. I really am looking forward to talking about more classic movies this summer. Guys, thank you as always. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.